All right, this is number three for today. This is a 2007 Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 3.7. Uh, complaint from Pete, he told me that it has an idle air control fault code and has some kind of running problem. That's all I know. So I just ID'd the vehicle. Let's go ahead in and see what kind of fault codes we have. We're gonna go under the engine. Apologize for the glare. Codes only. I have an idle speed performance. Let's see if you guys can see that. I have a P0507 idle speed performance higher than expected. Um, my guess is this is drive by wire. I don't know offhand. Um, that actually sounds like a code that is an effect, not a cause. In other words, it's it's not an idle speed control problem. It's something that's affecting the idle speed that's setting that fault code. So we'll go to data. Yeah, we actually have a throttle data parameter. Let's start the vehicle. Some blue smoke on startup, some rattling. That sounds better. Yeah, this is definitely drive-by wire. I know that just based on the data pit. See, we have APP1 and 2 and TPS1 and 2. You see our target idle, that's desired, and then engine RPM. I'm worried about that white not showing up. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's move that away from there. So you see our target idle and then engine speed or RPM. Thinking maybe I need to test drive this to verify the complaint. Look at some other PIDs, like O2s. Curious to see what that is. I don't mind seven and four. Short term looks great. The only reason I was looking at these was uh, for the potential for a vacuum leak, something like that. Although this is a speed density engine, so meaning it has a map sensor, no mass airflow. And fuel trims can actually be normal with a vacuum leak on these. But initially viewing fuel trims, they look pretty decent. Um, right now it seems to be running fine. Going back to my throttle, I'm exactly where my idle needs to be. Desired is 720. I'm actually, my actual RPM's right around there. Let's see what kind of freeze frame data we have for when this fault set. So freeze frame data, I need to go to my home screen and I need to go OBD2, OBD Direct. The nice thing about this newer system, I'm using a Modus Ultra today. Uh, there's no chips, it's all built in, which is pretty cool. I don't have to move keys around. We may end up using the troubleshooter to help us on this one. Uh, let's go freeze frame. This is kind of a snapshot of when this fault code set. Engine speed was 638. My throttle position was 11%. This map intake inches of mercury, that's subtracted from the key on engine off barrow of 28. Six, so that'd be 18 inches of vacuum, no problem there. Short term, long term look normal. I see nothing there that would help me. 
I'm going to go back and one other data pit you know could this potentially be just a dirty throttle body I've seen dirty throttle bodies set uh, these types of faults my absolute throttle position is 11 percent I don't know what it should be like what would be ideal I know in a GM we want to be under 10 percent when you clean them you might see six percent as they get dirty that throttle percentage will rise I don't know if that is going to be the same for this Chrysler let me go back to the home tab go to scanner and oh, let's do this previous vehicles vehicle history we want this guy right here and what I want is well, let's go nope Let's go uh, codes only again. P0507. Not going to use short track. I just want my troubleshooter. Looking for some help. Zero five five oh seven. This is stuff that's preloaded into the Snap On scan tools, whether it be the Solus, Solus Pro, um, Veris, Modus, Modus Ultra. All, all the scan tools. I think other than the Ethos would have this troubleshooter info. Let me just read this for a second. Engine speed is two hundred or more RPM above target for 30 seconds so a higher than normal idle speed air induction leaks PCV engine vacuum yeah cool so those are possible causes this is kinda cool they give you live data with the tip see no issues with this right now maybe a test drive is in order here let's at least go under the hood and take a look see if we maybe see anything or hear anything maybe if we get lucky we'll you know hear some kind of hiss or something under the hood find a vacuum line off that'd be cool now, I haven't done anything yet except look and listen I hear a hiss back here. This is a plastic intake though, so we have to be careful. These plastic intakes like to make this noise with no problem at all. I'm gonna go get my favorite tool for finding vacuum leaks. So, using some water, my favorite tool. Just a little hole in a pop bottle. Let's see what we find. I think that hiss might just be the plastic intake. It's been fooled by those before. Wait a minute. I think I just found it. Um, let me get you where I was, hold on.
I think maybe the hissing that I was hearing from the other side was just noise transferring. This, uh, I believe it's the tube for the EGR system. I'll show you, and listen. see my face here let me zoom out because I'm smiling it's been a rough day man but I love the water test can you hear that let me zoom you in it's got this has a, a camera mic zoom so hopefully it picks this up listen So there's some kind of o-ring or something in this tube it's good down below right there no question about it that's awesome I mean I can't tell you how many times guys I've seen people you know you got an idle idle speed control error code so they change the idle air control valve you know or in this case it's the whole throttle body you know you can't diagnose systems based on trouble codes that's the lesson here you guys just scan your vehicles and got a code and think you're going to change a part there's a lesson for you this doesn't need a part it needs an o-ring it doesn't need a part associated with the idle speed control system we have a vacuum leak that's raising the idle speed and that's what's setting this fault code you know it almost looks like this is missing a um a hold down bracket here yeah, I don't know for sure, but I can move that tube in and out. My hand's probably in the way for that shot. But that is definitely where my leak is. I'll let Pete know, and that'll be a fix for this. Change those O-rings that are in there, or it might be the tube itself. But again, good lesson on don't be a parts changer. Know how to do diagnostic work. Know how to troubleshoot. Don't just read a fault code and change a part and the other cool lesson here too guys is finding vacuum leaks with water awesome